My dear young brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to explain to you a surah that each and every one of you has memorized. It is perhaps your first surah that you have memorized in the Quran. It is Surah Al-Ikhlas. Surah Al-Ikhlas, that short surah that is a surah that perhaps your mother or father taught it to you, the very first surah. And you and I, we both love this surah because it is so short and sweet. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you know what he said, even though it is one of the shortest surah in the Quran? And by Surah Al-Ikhlas, I mean, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ This is called Surah Al-Ikhlas. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you know what he said about this surah? He said, I swear by Allah, this surah is equal to one third of the Quran. Innaha la ta'adilu thuluth al-Quran. Now what does it mean it equals one third of the Quran? It doesn't mean that if you just recite this surah three times, you don't need the rest of the Quran. No, it means in blessings, in reward, it is equal to one third of the Quran. Obviously in meaning, every ayah has a beautiful meaning that no other ayah has. And no one ayah can substitute for another. But in blessings, Surah Al-Ikhlas, the small surah, it will give you the blessings of one third of the Quran. And this is because our scholars say the Quran is divided into three primary areas or contents. One third of the Quran deals with Allah and His names and attributes. Who is Allah? And that is summarized in Surah Al-Ikhlas. One third of the Quran deals with the laws, the halal, the haram, eating and drinking, prayer, zakah, Ramadan. That's one third of the Quran. And then one third of the Quran, it deals with heaven and hell and the stories of the prophets. And therefore, one third is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One third is the laws. And one third is the qasas of the past and the future, which is heaven and hell and the, the stories of the previous prophets. So Surah Al-Ikhlas, it substitutes for one third of the meaning of the Quran. And this beautiful surah was revealed very early on in Mecca. When one of the leaders of the other tribes, he heard that our Prophet Muhammad had a new religion. And so he went to him and he said, O oh Muhammad, which God are you calling to? What is this new religion? So our Prophet said, Allah. So this Bedouin, he didn't know any better. He said, describe this God to me. Is he made out of gold or silver? Or is he made out of copper or wood? Which God is this? Because these people, they worshipped, what did they worship? Idols. And these idols, they would carve them with their own hands. And they would make images. Describe this God to me. Is he like a falcon with the head of a lion and the body of a this? What is this God that you're worshipping? So his mind, this Bedouin uh, tribesman, he cannot understand a God that you do not carve. An idol that you do not make out of wood, make out of uh, iron, make out of gold. So he said, what is he made of? Who is his father? Because they would have gods that have lineages. And if you study any mythical religion, the Romans, the, the, the ancient Greeks, the, the, the Hindu religions, they have a whole family of gods. This god married that god, they had this child. This is in their culture. So the man is saying, what is his nasab? Where is his lineage? Where does this god come from? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in response to this question, Surah Al-Ikhlas. He revealed Surah Al-Ikhlas. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ Now one of the beautiful points before we move on is that my dear brothers and sisters, it is the wisdom of Allah that He has chosen really two surahs of the Qur'an and uh, two surahs of the Qur'an especially that have become the most popular amongst all Muslims around the world. And these two surahs are the ones that even us young children, when we start memorizing the Qur'an, our parents teach these two surahs to us before any other surah. And even as we grow up, most of us stick to these surahs even as adults. And these are Surah Al-Kawthar and Surah Al-Ikhlas. And it is hardly possible that a day goes by, except that, mashallah, tabarakallah, the bulk of our salah is consisting of Ikhlas and Kawthar after Fatiha. And... If you look at the content of these surahs, and it is not a coincidence that Allah has written for these surahs acceptance. Yes, it is true, perhaps we love them for the wrong reason that it's so small, but even in this there's blessings. That Allah knows that most of the Muslims are not going to recite Baqarah in their salah. 
And so Allah chose a surah, two surahs that complement one another. And these two surahs, as we said, are kawthar and ikhlas. Now, surah al-kawthar, inna a'tinaka al-kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar inna sha'anika huwa al-abtar. This surah is defending the honor of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And ikhlas is defending the honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhlas and kawthar put together are our religion. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Surah Al-Ikhlas is all about the perfection of Allah. Surah Al-Kawthar is all about the perfection of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these two surahs are the most beloved surahs to young and old, to man and women, to practicing and not practicing. Everybody knows, everybody memorizes, everybody loves these surahs. And even in this, there's wisdom from up there that Ikhlas and Kawthar complement one another. Also, my dear brothers and sisters, do you know that Surah Al-Ikhlas was the surah that our Prophet ﷺ read as soon as he woke up. And it is the last surah he read before going to sleep. How so? Because what is the first prayer that you pray as soon as a practicing good Muslim, he wakes up, he's supposed to pray the Fajr prayer. But before the Fard of the Fajr, there's two Sunnahs of the Fajr, right? And what did our Prophet ﷺ make it a habit to pray in the two Sunnahs of Fajr? Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Al-Kafirun. As soon as he woke up for Salat al-Fajr, you have two rak'ahs you have to pray. He made it our sunnah and to this day, this is the sunnah. That the Muslim wakes up, he does wudu and he prays two rak'ahs, sunnah al-Fajr. What does he pray in those two rak'ahs? Surah al-Kafirun, Surah al-Ikhlas. And then the very last prayer of the night is the witr salah. And our Prophet ﷺ would recite Surah al-Ikhlas in the witr salah. So it is as if ikhlas begins the day and ikhlas ends the day. Not only this, our Prophet ﷺ would recite ikhlas whenever he would do the tawaf around the Kaaba, which is the greatest act of worship, demonstrating the beauty, the perfection of Allah. And after he would do the tawaf, he would pray two rak'ah. And in those two rak'ah, once again, ikhlas and kafirun. So Surah Al-Ikhlas is a surah that our Prophet ﷺ recited many times. And he made it a sunnah to recite to us day in and day out, literally day in and day out. And the meanings of this surah are very deep and profound. And wallahi, we can give hours and hours of lectures about just Surah Al-Ikhlas, but we only have 15 minutes. So let us summarize what are some of the elements of this surah that me and you, we can understand. My dear brothers and sisters, this small surah, despite its size, it summarizes for us our relationship with Allah. It summarizes for us what we believe about Allah. It summarizes what makes Islam different from every other religion in this world. What is our unique selling point, my dear brothers and sisters? What makes us different? It's our concept of our God. If you look at any other religion, they have a different concept of God. And we don't agree with that concept. We say Allah is unique, nothing like Him. We say Allah Azza wa Jal is a Samad, He doesn't need anything, everybody needs Him. And we say He doesn't have children, nor is He begotten, and there is nothing like unto Him. This beautiful summary of our Lord is why Surah Al-Ikhlas is so beautiful. And we conclude the first khutbah by mentioning one of the most sweetest ahadith about Surah Al-Ikhlas. And it is a hadith in which a companion of our Prophet Sallallahu he would lead the prayer. And every time he would lead the prayer, he would recite Surah Al-Ikhlas. He would recite Fatiha and then Ikhlas. And then he would move on to another surah. Until somebody in the audience got irritated. This was another masjid in the lifetime of the process of a faraway masjid outside of Medina. So another companion got irritated. He said, why do you always recite Ikhlas in every single rak'ah? The man felt, didn't want to answer. He said, I'm not going to answer you, but this is my habit. I'm going to recite Ikhlas. Somebody else complained. And he said, look, if you want another Imam, that's fine. But I will always recite Ikhlas in every rak'ah. That's my methodology, my style. Eventually, a third man complained to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. He went to him in Medina. He said, Ya Rasulullah, our Imam that has been appointed, in every single rak'ah after Fatiha, he recites Ikhlas, then he moves on to a longer surah. Not that if he only recited Ikhlas. He moves on to a longer surah. So now the Prophet ﷺ said, tell him, I am asking him, why is he doing that? He can't say no to the Prophet ﷺ. Go tell him, I am asking him, why is he doing that? So they went and they said, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is asking you, why do you recite Surah Al-Ikhlas? Now he cannot get out of it. So he says, because Ikhlas, Surah Al-Ikhlas describes my Lord. And I love 
to read his descriptions. Because Surah Al-Ikhlas describes my Lord and I love to read his descriptions. When they went back and they told the Prophet in his response, he said, go back and tell the man that his love for Surah Al-Ikhlas has caused him to enter Jannah. Now my dear brothers and sisters, we also love Surah Al-Ikhlas. But let us make our love for Surah Al-Ikhlas not just because it is a small surah, but because it is a surah that describes Allah. And it is a surah that complements Surah Al-Kawthar. And it is a surah that tells us the uniqueness and the perfect nature of our Lord. It is sunnah to love Surah Al-Ikhlas, but we should love it because it describes our Lord. Barakallahu alaykum fi Quran Azim. My beloved brothers and sisters, Surah Ikhlas is one of the shortest yet most profound chapters in the Quran. It encapsulates the essence of Tawheed, declaring that Allah is unique, eternal and self-sufficient. This chapter refutes all forms of polytheism and idolatry, emphasizing that there is nothing comparable to Allah. Reciting it strengthens a Muslim's understanding of their faith and their relationship with their Creator. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, described Surah Ikhlas as equal to one third of the Quran in reward. Its concise yet powerful message makes it easy to memorize and recite regularly in prayers, seeking Allah's blessings. It serves as a reminder that quality of worship matters more than the quantity as this short surah contains deep meanings that resonate with every believer. Reciting Surah Ikhlas is also a means of protection and spiritual benefit. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended reciting it in the morning, evening and before sleeping along with Surah Al-Falaq and An-Nas to safeguard against harm. Its verses provide comfort and tranquility affirming Allah's unmatched authority and mercy over his creation. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.